Today we're going to take a look at the Beyond Multimedia Mixdown function. This feature allows you to not only create preview videos of your laser content, but also mix laser and multimedia content into one single exported video. In this example, I have a Beyond Show loaded that contains both a video segment and laser graphic images, uh, in this case overlaid on top of each other for this show. What I want to do is generate a preview image that contains both the video and laser portions together at once so that I can show a potential client or for other internal company reference or whatever your needs are. If I play this show, you can see that the video file also has audio with it and we're going to use that in our mixdown as well. To export our show as a video file, in Beyond we go to the file menu and then select Export Show Multimedia Mixdown. As you can see, that brings up the Multimedia Mixdown window. Under Settings, we have several selections we can make. First, under Mixdown Type, we can choose Laser Over Video, which will combine both our laser and our video images into one exported video. We can select Laser Only, which will just export the laser output. Or we can ex choose audio video tracks only, which will only export multimedia tracks out, so which would be just the video and the audio. On our second set of choices, we have file format, audio and video, or just video only. For the audio and video ones, you can export as an AVI file or as an MP4 file. These days, MP4 is probably more widely used. Uh, you have two different choices of MP4s as well. You can go with Chroma 420 or 444. You probably want to go with 420 to make it the most compatible. Then it can be viewed on TVs or even if somebody has a lesser system. And mo modern computers these days will do 444 no problem, but just to be sure you might go with 420 just for compatibility sake. You also have essentially the same three choices that would export just the video with no audio to it. The next choice we have, laser painting method. This is pretty much the same as in your regular preview window, the enhanced reality preview or simplified graphics. I'd really suggest going with enhanced reality preview. It'll look a lot better. Obviously, if your system is not as powerful, you may want to go with simplified graphics, just as you might using the regular preview window when you're working. All of these previews are generated in real time, so you will need a computer with fairly decent specs in order to be able to export a smooth video. Your next choices, and under video, we can select frames per second. I'm going to leave this at 30 because our original video was at 30, but it's a good idea to match the original frame rate of your source video if you have one on the timeline. Below that we have resolutions and aspect ratios, uh, both 69 widescreen and 43 and 1 to 1, which is what laser windows typically tend to be. There are several presets you can choose from in various aspect ratios and sizes. You want to choose the one obviously that is suited to what your needs are. If you're going to be sending this to somebody over the internet, you want to probably want to make it a little bit smaller than if you're giving somebody a file on a flash drive or whatnot. Obviously, if it's going to be in a presentation, you probably want to go with a bigger size. For this first example, since we're just going to export a laser only image and not video, I'm going to go ahead and export it as a full square image, 400 by 400. Just to give you an example, since that's the aspect ratio of the original laser window and image. If you export at a widescreen ratio or broadcast standard, keep in mind that the way the preview is set by default, if it's at 100% by 100%, you're going to wind up with a squashed laser image because it'll be taking that square image and pushing it down into the widescreen area. But I'll show you later on how to get around that as well. And then down below, you have under time range, complete, which is self-explanatory, it will export the entire timeline. Or range, by choosing range, you can select a time period and tell it to start at a certain point on the timeline and end at a certain point on the timeline and just export that segment out. And then open folder after export is self-explanatory pretty much. After you've finished exporting your multimedia mix down, it'll open up the window in Windows where the file is so you can easily find it. For this first example, we're going to do a laser only export. In the upper left hand corner, you see the start and stop buttons. Start starts the export. It'll bring up a window that asks you to save the file name. Type in your file name and click save.
you'll see it playing back the laser portion along with the audio as it exports it to a video for you. Now that it is through exporting, it's opened up our folder and if we play the video, we can see our exported file. And as you can see, we have just the laser portion of our timeline show as that's what we told it just to export. For this next example, we're going to export just a segment of our timeline. So we're going to select our start point. We're going to make that at one second into the timeline. It's only a 10 second show, for an example. And we're going to set our endpoint at eight seconds. Say OK. And then We've got that set now, so if we go up and export our show, uh, we'll give it a different file name so that we save it as something else. And save it. We're now exporting just that segment of the show that we told it to export. And if we take a look at it here and play it, we'll see that we just have the portion of the show that we told it to export from one second to eight seconds. Next, we're going to do an export combining the laser and the video elements. So we select laser over video from our selection up here. Uh, we're going to keep it with our still square aspect ratio for now uh, and keep all of our other settings the same. And we click start to export. We'll give it a different file name again and click save. Now you won't see the video portion of it as it exports because it's just generating the laser portion live. But once it opens up, if we click our video, now you can see we have a laser overlay with our video segment that's on the timeline. Now I mentioned earlier that if you chose a widescreen aspect ratio and you have a square laser window, you're going to wind up with a squashed image. Let's take a look at that right now. If I generate it with a widescreen aspect ratio, change the name real quickly. Save. And you can see on my preview of the laser image it's now squashed. And when it finishes generating it, if we look at the final video, now you can see the laser image is squashed in the middle of my video image. My original video was widescreen, the laser image is not, and now I have a squashed laser image. But there is a way to fix that. We're going to exit the multimedia export window and in beyond we're going to go into the projection zones settings and we're going to go to the preview tab and there you can see uh, we have both height and width size for our preview image and because our video image is wider we're going to make the laser image taller 16 by 9 is about 1.78 to 1 aspect ratio so we're going to put in 178 as our height and if we now export a widescreen video as it exports you can see that our laser image is back to being tall again being the proper aspect ratio and if we play back the video that we just exported you can see that now things are back to lining up correctly. The laser is no longer squashed and we have a nice widescreen video. For the last example, we're gonna demonstrate a multimedia mix down that features just the audio and video portions and no laser. As you can see, I made a different version of the show and this time we have multiple multimedia elements. The video is on one track, the audio is on another track. There could be even more we're going to do an export to show how it combines separate multimedia timeline elements into one final video. So if we open up the multimedia mix down, we go to audio video tracks only. And if you go up to the start button and start the export, and wait for it to do the export. Then if we play our exported video, you can see that we now have a final video export that combines the audio track and the video track that were both separate on the Beyond Timeline, all into one video. 
These have been some basic examples of things that can be done with Beyond's Multimedia Mixdown feature. Be sure to like and subscribe for more tutorial videos from Penguin. Thanks for watching.